This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real learning, real videos, real success. In this demo, we're going to be looking at the way a trace breaks down in T-SQL. So to go ahead and get started, we're going to bring up our Management Studio, and we're going to use that to launch our SQL Server Profiler. Now, your SQL traces are really a part of SQL Server Profiler. So when we connect to this, it's building a trace file, and this is just a GUI to help us manage it. But in the end, what's produced is actually a SQL trace. So if I give it a name, test, and we'll stick with our standard template. I can choose to save it to a file. So we're saving it to a location. And if I want to, I could also save it to a table. So we can see how all these things look inside of our environment. So again, I'll go to my admin DB. And we'll have it go into our test file. So I've now set it to save to a file and save to our database. Again, we have a bunch of stuff selected as far as events go. Those are all fine. We'll leave those in their defaults. And if I wanted to, I can now run this trace. So we'll go ahead and run the trace. And I'll quickly stop it because I'm actually not worried about it capturing the information right now. But I wanted the trace file up in my window because now I can export it. So if I go under my file and I go under export, I can actually script the trace definition and I can script it as a SQL trace collection set, as a SQL Server 2005 to 11 actual trace file. I can do it as SQL Server events, and I can extract the T-SQL events from it, or analysis services events if I had been tracking that type of information. So we have a lot of different options when we're working with this. We're going to go ahead and do it based on our SQL trace definition, and we'll do it 2005 to SQL 11, which is your current 2012 version. So it now is going to generate a .sql file. And I'll go ahead and put it in my MKTG. And I will call it test trace. So this has now created a SQL file that I can see in my file system, in our MKTG folder. And if I go under my test trace, .sql, there it is, testtrace.sql. If I were to open that up in my management studio, I can see what profiler actually created to generate the trace information. Now, there's some basic structures in place here. You'll notice it's created several variables that it's going to use going forward. It also has an execution that's going to run the trace with a little insert file name here. <laughs> so I would actually have to feed it the SQL file as a part of this. So it's actually set this up so that we can actually track the trace file name that we want. So from this, I could actually go back to my file system, which in our case is just our D colon backslash, and then it's our MKTG folder backslash. And then specifically, we're looking at our test file that we created. So again, within here, we have our test.trc. So as you're building this out, that's what it's looking for. It's looking for the appropriate path to the .trc file that it's going to be working with. Now, from there, we've made that's the only change we really had to make so that it knew how it was going to track its data. The actual trace itself is scripted below. So we are setting a series of SP trace set event commands. Now here's the ugly part. If we were trying to do this by hand, your trace events don't take any nice, clean words. These are the actual event IDs associated with their sub sections. So for a particular event and the particular combination of columns, that's what it's capturing. So for event 14, I've got 1, 9, 10, 11, 6, 12, and 14 columns being captured. 
and that's the way it works. It's one of the reasons why we like to use SQL Profiler as a GUI to help generate this, because it's not that easy to work with. But we can see that everything that we had selected has now been targeted using the SP trace event for that particular trace ID. And then we're able to set our filters if there were any, set our status so that it's enabled. And then when we're ready, we now have a completed trace. That's all it takes. But you do have to know what these different IDs are or go through Profiler and then just generate the code. Now you might ask, why would I ever do this instead of just using the GUI? Couple reasons. SQL Server Profiler has a heavy footprint. It's a big impact on your system. But the underlying trace that this represents is not nearly as heavy. So if all you need to do is track the information with the minimal impact possible, generating the code, identifying the file, and running it from here will perform significantly better than if you try and run it with the profiler up and running with that big GUI trying to show you everything all pretty. But with that, you now have a sense of what it takes to build a trace file using our SP trace set events within our T-SQL. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.